things. Um, and as I said before, and I, and I really wasn't just saying it, if you watch all of her matches, no, no two matches are the same. And that's, um, that's, that's not likely in these day and age. A lot of times, you know, up and coming wrestlers, they kind of get in their groove and they stick with what works. And she's out there working with different people into gender matches. Um, do the right thing and pick up the Golden State Warrior shirt for the third time because it's, it's super badass. We should get a shirt on ProWrestlingTees.com. We should. I think we're only like 4,900 4, followers on Twitter, on Twitter away from getting it. So. Cool. So if, if everybody slowly listening. But surely we'll be on there. Every, well, Thunder Rosa has 14,000 followers on Instagram. Yep. So if every single one of her followers yeah. were to listen to our show, uh-huh. like our page, at All Night Long WP. That's correct. You will be the first ones to get a free T-shirt from the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast and Pro Wrestling Tees. It is going to be silk screened. It's going to be a Polaroid of me slugging a bottle of Clorox to the face. That's going to be the shirt. It's going to say, drink bleach, save water. Yeah, I'm going to sprinkle some Drano over my pasta tonight. Uh, so, you know, whatever. We can maybe a little screen cap. Yeah. A little screen cap of that. And we'll that, get that image on a shirt. Yeah, we'll just or, kick me in the nuts for an hour. Or like a sheet cake. I like to have an image on a sheet cake maybe. And then just so we can eat a picture of me eating Drano. You know what, really? We were doing so well. It's like uh, Inception. Thunder, as soon as Thunder yeah. Rosa left, we just... She brought a lot of positivity. She yeah. brought a great discussion. Yeah. And now we're back to you and I being garbage. Just terrible, disgustingly ugly I am, at least. You're, no, that's terrible. You're that's the ridiculous. stallion. No. You're keeping us together here. Disgusting. What are we talking about this week? Well, I think great we couple, balls of fire. A couple of things, yeah. We got a little great balls of fire. And then, <sighs> uh, things that are happening on, on, on Raw, obviously, yeah. Uh, that leading into SummerSlam. And then, and then we then want to do the five count. We got the five count. We've been teasing the five count. I think more than anything has been teased we, on this show in the history of this show. So You know what? Because we, we never it, know when anything's going to happen on the yeah, show. We better make it good. I think, do we want it? Mm, but do you, how do you, why don't you? Let's talk a little about the pay-per-view. Damn uh, it, I wanted to do the five count. You want to do the five count? No, I'm just kidding. Do the pay-per-view. Okay. I feel like that's the main event, right? Is the five count. With it will list, be. Right, I'll give my list. You'll tell me how stupid it is, and then we'll just keep going. That's how I. You'll yell at me for having nine Kenny Omega matches yeah, on a five. Count. Five, five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five Kenny Omega matches and four honorable mentions, and one Bret Hart match that I watched. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's talk about Great Balls of Fire. Um, this Sunday, the Raw pay per view. It's not the Great American Bash. It's the Great Balls of Fire. Now, going into the pay per view, I would say we had. Less than high expectations. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I mean, I think I I was looking at um, the two main events of Lesnar versus Joe and Strowman versus Reigns in the ambulance match as the two matches that I was hoping would deliver, you know, quality entertainment in the ring. Right. The other stuff, I wasn't really sure. Right. I didn't really expect a lot out of. Wyatt and Rollins or Ambrose and Miz, that can kind of go either way. Um, the Iron Man match I was I was hoping would be good. I like Iron Man matches. I like both those teams. Um, so I wasn't sure which way that was going to go. So I was kind of teetering on how the show was going to be. It could have been, I thought, good. It could have been maybe not so good going in. So I wasn't really sure what to expect overall. I was pleasantly surprised with the entire show. Um, we'll just quickly go match by match. Bray Wyatt versus Seth Rollins. It was a decent match for what it was, but I really feel like there wasn't a lot of heat, a lot of a lot of chutzpah in that match, if you will. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to. I don't know. I, don't, I these guys, I feel like, for as I don't want to say popular is not the right word, but as featured of guys as they've been for the last couple of years. Is Wyatt especially? I feel like has been involved in matches that have been entirely underwhelming. Um, and maybe not as good as I expected. I think he early on in his run, he had a match with Daniel Bryan at the Rumble in 2014 that was very, very good. And I think based off of that, um, myself and a lot of other fans were expecting Wyatt to kind of be at a level where, okay, this is a big guy that can really go in the ring. He's going to have a lot of good matches with a lot of um, different guys. And I really can't think of many matches since then that have stood out to me as being you know, excellent one-on-one matches that he's been involved in. So he's been a little disappointing in the ring. Do you think – sorry to cut you off. Do you think that has to do with his gimmick more than his ability? I don't know. I mean, it's, I think it's, I mean, it's a little bit of both. But, you know, he doesn't, like, wrestle, like, that slowly in terms of, like – he does a lot of moves that are quick, right? The sister Abigail, he does, like, that cross body. Like, he does some things that are very athletic. It's just his matches are just not – 
you know, bell to bell um, humdingers. Yeah, they're not really, really very nice. captivating or whatever you want to call it. So it's it's just been he's been very hit or miss. And Rollins, I like a lot. I think he's a really good worker. But for for whatever reasons, if it's his character or his opponents or the feuds he's been in, some of them kind of end up falling flat. He's had matches with Kevin Owens. I think we all had high expectations for that maybe weren't as good as we thought they were going to be. Definitely. Um, you know, and this match with Wyatt, I thought was not bad. It was solid. It was an opener as the opener, but I didn't think it was like a blow away match or a crazy, you know, uh, you know, spot, whatever you want to call it, a crazy great wrestling match that I would go back and watch again. Yeah. I thought, um, like I said, it was serviceable and Bray Wyatt got the win, which I definitely think was the right move. Uh, the next match really is not much to talk about was an elongated squash. The story was that, Enzo wouldn't give up, and Big Cass beat his ass in five minutes, throwing him out of the ring, you know, destroying him, big boot. Enzo sells like a champ, and uh, the right guy won here. Yeah, I think, you know, if any outcome that wasn't Big Cass destroying Enzo was probably not the right outcome. Um, so they kind of did that. It went about a little over five minutes. It was what you expected it to be. They really don't seem to see Enzo as any sort of significant player as an in-ring uh, character, so he seems to be more of a promo guy or um, that type of thing. So they they they're, they seem set on pushing pushing big cast. So um, you know that's uh, that's kind of what they went with that. So that was the right outcome. Yep. Next uh, was the Iron. Man. This I call shenanigans. This was not an Iron Man match. Why not? Because it's thirty minutes. Iron Man is sixty minutes. It was a thirty minute Iron Man match. So I think oh, okay. Was- that's like saying he bowled a one fifty three hundred. No, it's it's a it's a half an Iron Man match. It's a it's a it's a it's a plastic man match. That's what I would say to these marks. We're just getting. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good match. I just wouldn't call it an Iron Man match. Um, Cesaro and Sheamus uh, defeated the Hardy Boys four to three. And man, what a good match! It kind of in the middle. I thought it was uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little um, plotting, but I think really towards the end, like the last fifteen minutes, they really ramped it up and they got um, know, maybe less ten minutes. And there were some good spots. Matt got busted open. I don't even know how, but that dude was bleeding like a stuck pig. I definitely added to the match. Of course, wasn't you know, he wasn't supposed to. It was the, the hard way, as the kids call it. And uh, definitely the right team won. Cesaro and Sheamus are on a roll, and they're only getting better. I'm, I'm loving what they're doing with them. And I'm glad they kept the titles on them. Yeah, I, I thought the match was very good. Um, I read some recaps of it where some of the you know the reviewers thought it was a little bit slow or boring early on. I didn't really get that feel from it i was kind of into it the whole way i liked that the way that they opened the match with the surprise uh you know distraction pinfall finish uh right away on matt so um you know the heels doing heel stuff and the ending sequence the last like five or six minutes was very very good and uh action-packed so the right team won and kept the titles i think that was the right thing to do and uh, they had they put on a great match and i don't know what's next for sheamus and cesaro but um, they got to couple of another team to uh to face yeah, uh, the next match, uh, Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. For my money, I think this was the uh, most disappointing match on the card. Um, it started off pretty hot, but I don't know. These two girls, I don't know if they didn't click or maybe just the count-out finish, which we saw happen, what, two months ago? Alexa Bliss left? She does that. That's her thing. That's her thing, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of tired of that count-out finish, at least, you know, cheat to win. But um, these two, they, they had a, a decent match, but I think I just had higher expectations for a 12-minute match between Alexa Bliss and um, Sasha Banks. Yeah, I mean, it was what it was. I think, uh, you know, I don't remember what, I, you know, I would, ex- I would have expected it to be a situation where Bliss either got disqualified or counted out. They probably want to, you know, extend this feud out a little bit longer. It's just getting started. I don't know if they have a plan for SummerSlam or what they're going to do, but I think they're back to kind of featuring Sasha Banks in the women's division on Raw, they've kind of, I don't know, I'll say they've given up on Bailey, but they've pushed her a little bit to the back of the line. Well, until um, Monday. Well, I mean, who knows? They, <laughs> they don't really seem to have a plan. So, yeah, it was it was okay. It wasn't really anything anything great. They had a little bit of a brawl after the match ended, a spot up by the announce table, which they probably should have just done that during the match. Then we had a double count out, and maybe that would have been a better way to book it. But seriously, on the fly, you're pulling out better ideas. That, that would have been a great ending. It would have yeah, – we get Alexa Bliss is, is a chicken poop heel. But, like, you know, you could have had Sasha – Alexa Bliss try to leave, get the count out. Sasha followed her, then did the spot. Yeah. That's probably what, what why don't we get paid the big bucks? Oh, if it, We're not Hollywood writers, so that doesn't really – Or – We don't qualify. Or I'm not smart. 
You can't put words in things and make sentences. I suck. Speaking of, the Miz versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship was next. And for as good a match as these guys had, I think, at Extreme Rules in the opener, which was a surprisingly good match, I think, exceeded my expectations. Uh, This one, I think, fell well below uh, the expectations. I was hoping they would have at least as good of a match as they did in the prior month, but it seemed like it was more just a... uh, just there for the, the shenanigans and to establish the Miz who I do enjoy. Yeah, um, me too. As a uh, you know, as, as part of the act, and uh, you know, these guys needed to move in different directions from each other. Um, I don't know if they're actually going to do that, <laughs> but um, they they needed to move in different directions from each other. And hopefully, this is the last singles match in the feud, and um, they can both move on. Miz retained the championship over uh, Dean Ambrose a little over. 11 minutes. Yeah, these guys have wrestled together so many times that I've lost count. But I'll tell you this, they every match has been, at the very least, serviceable. You know, I thought this was another strong match between the two. I think they just seem to have a really good chemistry. And I'm also not the biggest fan of Dean Ambrose in the ring. I think it's be, you know he's kind of gotten a little bit stale and stuff. But I don't know if the Miz brings it out of him or Ambrose is really kind of working a little bit harder. But I thought, the, you know, they, they've been doing – They've been doing their thing, and Miz had to – the cheating heel had to resort to his wife and two cronies to beat the good guy. And I thought that it was by the book booking, if you will. I thought it was good. Ne- so good. We, we're so excited to both so talk about the Angels in, match. Yeah, so the keyed ambulance. in. Uh, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman in an ambulance match. I don't usually like ambulance matches. I think they're a little – the outcomes are a little weak. This was one of the better ones I can remember. Um Roman Reigns needs to be praised for his selling ability. That guy spent like 16 minutes and 34 seconds just bumping all around the ring for Braun Strowman. And Roman Reigns is not a small guy. Uh, thought it was a, a really good match between these two. Braun, he's obviously wrestling longer matches, but he's they're doing a really good job in hiding, in hiding any of his faults. Um, and Roman's the guy to do it because Roman's going to just – you know, ping pong all around the ring. And I thought they had a good match. The ending, however, was a little questionable in my mind. Uh, why did, why by Braun win the match if you're just going to make Roman the number one contender the next night? You could have just had Roman win the match. I think the story is yet to be told, my friend. That's yeah. what I'm going to go with. Oh, uh, do you, you know something? I, don't I know? know some things. I feel like I predicted some things. I'm not going to say what they are because I've read, I then read a potential spoiler, so I don't want to. Sp- Spread that out. Oh, let's put the word out on that. Let me let me guess. I'm just going to – now, see me, I don't – you could say yes or no if it's true. I don't read the, you know, the sheets of the dirt. So is it possible Braun is going to come back next week and inject himself in the Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe match? That's possible. Okay. All right, good. It's possible. Let's keep it a possible. But anyway, uh, the finish was a little weird. Um Braun was by the ambulance doors. Roman went to the spear. Braun moved. Roman went in there. Then Braun shut the door and got the W. Roman comes out. He's with a super-duper ooper spear and then uh, throws him in the ambulance for no reason whatsoever and then uh, kills him. Uh, attempted murder. I yeah. think we need to make sure. We, he's not dead that we know of. He, well, we they didn't really provide an update. But, Maybe I mean, he I think went to the woods on. and passed on. I mean, I would hope that somebody would have found him by now. He's a big man. You would have put that on the, you know, on the, the website of the app or the Twitter or something. Probably the same place where they're uh, talking about the Del Rio and Page scandal. Huh? I don't want to no. What's I don't want to talk. I don't know. No. So <laughs> after the match was over, um, the attempted murder of uh, of Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns commandeered the ambulance, put Braun in the ambulance, and uh, backed it up into a bigger truck or something and just crushed it and uh killed him Ron was in there he was dead attempted murder uh he was pretty banged up when they eventually got the jaws of life as opposed to just you know getting somebody in the ambulance and driving it forward five feet away from the truck they used the jaws of life to get the uh, or even try to open the door instead of using a crowbar yeah like you didn't even use a handle but he was okay he got out he was a little bit banged up but he was able to kind of walk away um, so roman reigns is in a heel but he murdered somebody yeah so in the last like six months or so, we've had a you know Roman Reigns try to kill Braun Strowman. Um, Braun Strowman also tried to kill Roman Reigns. So yeah. I guess this is just you know what's fair is fair. You know what's interesting? The announcers did not once touch on that that it was like payback for what happened at the Coliseum. Yeah, 
And also, Rand, you were interested 